Hi besties, I'm Jen. I'm Shannon, welcome back to the Calm and Chaotic Connection. We are best friends, we are complete opposites. Shannon has a big, beautiful, bushy eyebrow. She is blessed. My eyebrows are fake. They're a figment of your imagination. They are not what they seem. These are not real. <laughs> <laughs> they were gifted to her by her, <laughs> her sister-in-law, Tori. Today we're doing a little something a little different. We're taking you on the streets, if you will, on a little adventure to a, a salon. So you can witness Jen getting her eyebrows microbladed. Her sister-in-law, Tori, is going to be answering questions submitted by you guys and a few that we came up with. Um, I won't be in this video much. I'll be behind the camera and the cameraman and I'll be asking the questions and Jen will be laying on the table looking like she's dead. <laughs> we'll see you there. Bye. And your brows look like mine. Imagine. Yeah, she looks good with a little bit of an arch, right? Uh huh. Look good with eyebrows. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that too. So, um, most people ask me how I do. I knew I needed to have microblading done, and I don't think that a lot of people understand that I don't actually have eyebrows. <laughs> so even people that have eyebrow hair can still get microblading or the combo brows or the, you know, whatever they want for brows. They can, I mean, it's not just a, I don't have eyebrow hair, I want eyebrows. It's like anybody, anybody can get it if they want to. Um, it's just kind of personal preference, but you don't really have. <laughs> The eyebrow hair to make the good eyebrow shape. Correct. So, um, now it's different based off of skin color, skin type, what type of permanent makeup is, is going to be best for your skin. So, you've been microbladed a million times before. It's all disappeared. And that's because of your skin color and your skin type. So a lot of times with people of your complexion and your skin type, with microblading, it'll either dis disappear completely or what it does is it blurs out and the body kind of absorbs it. So it ends up turning into more shading than anything. Um, and that's just because of your skin type. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we changed from microblading to more of the powder brow, it stayed. And because, I liked it more. Yeah, because it does better for your skin. Now when you move your forehead like that. <laughs> I need Botox, look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, mine's the same way. So, I got this brow is pointing down a little farther than that brow. I should have got Botox before we came today so that you could work with like <laughs> a normal face. Yeah, so <laughs> my brows are even, but I have the muscle on this side above my eyebrow is a lot stronger than the muscle on this side. So my brows, my arches are off just by the tiniest bit because I use this side of my face more than I use this side. <laughs> So, so when you take a picture, they look like this, but it's like, if I get the tiniest bit of Botox right here, they'll be perfect. It's funny how that works. Is, is that what you do? You shoot Botox I in one side more than the other? I haven't gotten any Botox, and I keep thinking about it now that I have my brows done, but I'm like, oh, I just wear my hair, my bangs are on that side, it's fine. You, The fronts are even, you just, you can't tell that yeah. my arches aren't <laughs> even because my hair comes in, it's 
fine. I will get Botox, but I just need like, you know, I don't need a million meetings. I just need to tighten up that one spot. I need to straighten up that muscle on that side scowl with the other side of my face and stuff. Yeah, your RBF is uneven. <laughs> yeah. So the next time we're at a family party, I need you to yell at me. <laughs> when that face comes out, switch your face, switch sides. So when most people ask me what microblading is, I tell them that it's basically tattooing with that, without a needle and with a razor. <laughs> um, is that? It's pretty close, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not quite a razor, but it's like a line of needles. So it's still needles, but it's just kind of a line. You can get them in different shapes. Um, most of them, you can get them disposable. You probably can't see it too well. I can show it later, but it's kind of a U shape, and so it's got needles. Um, this one is a U18, so that means there's 18 needles in that U shape. Oh, okay, so I guess I was all wrong. I mean, it kind of forms the line of like a blade, so, and it, it does like slice the skin, kind of. So, I mean, like, it's, it's kind of close. You're close. Jen, how does it feel compared to being tattooed? Yeah. It's awful, right? No. Oh. Tat I would much rather get microbladed than tattooed. Really? I feel the opposite. Really? I hated having my brows done. When Tattoos I did my touch awful. up, I was. <laughs> I could have. When I did my brows the second time, I could have punched her for sure. Really? And I have quick blue Yeah, I don't have. I'm like a total wimp, but I definitely thought that I mean, it, tattooing with brows, was worse. With brows, at least we use. We use a lot of numbing. Yeah. Um, not as much as I wish we could, but we use quite a bit of numbing. You just can't use a lot of numbing because then it blanches the skin and then you can't see. Oh, yeah. Because the skin turns white. I know they look wild. Everything inside the brow. What do you think? Do you see anything? No, I like it. I'm ready. <laughs> Currently 
working on a certification for body sugaring, although I have been doing it for a while. Um, certified in lashes, hydrofacials, all the, all the good things. What is microblading? Uh, microblading is using this hand tool right here so you can get them just this is disposable so I'll dispose of it in a proper way um, otherwise you can get some that can be cleaned and sterilized all that kind of stuff so you can reuse them um, I just prefer disposables it just makes things easier then we don't have to have an autoclave or anything like that um, but it's basically a row of tiny needles that kind of form into like a blade um, and it you use it to be able to make tiny little hair like strokes in the skin uh, so that when we remove all of this pigment you'll have more of a natural looking brow and kind of looks like brow hair it is a semi-permanent procedure so it's not anything that's going to last for 100 years, but again, it's different for everybody and everybody's skin on how it holds it. So some people can have microblading done and it can last 10, 15 years. Some people can have it done and it lasts a year. It just really depends on the skin, the person, that kind of thing. Um, but it's really meant to be semi-permanent. It's meant to fade and be very natural to the skin into the brow hair, unlike um, like tattoos. And skincare does affect its fading. It can, yeah. So the the reason that tattoos and microblading are different is the type of pigment. So with microblading, we use pigment. So then with tattooing, it's ink. So with pigment, it is meant to fade. Um, that's the whole purpose of it. It's meant to fade naturally with the skin. And then it, with the microblading, we also don't go quite as deep into the skin um, as you would with tattooing. So when you use products, um, things like chemical peels, um, glycolic acid, salicylic acids, when you get into like any type of peels or acids, anything that's going to exfoliate the skin, it's going to just keep bringing that pigment up and getting rid of it. So that's also a nice thing is like if you decide, I don't want my brows anymore, <laughs> you just start using, get chemical peels, have them put it on your brows. Or you don't like the shape of them? Yeah, like that's the nice part about permanent makeup is you can change it at any point in time. It's meant to fade, it's meant to go away. Um, again, it's not like that for everybody. Um, it depends on the artist and their hand, the products they use, the types of pigment. Because um, there are some pigments out there that are meant to last a little bit longer. Um, the pigment line that we use is it's a fade line. So it's meant specifically to fade over time so that your clients can come back in a year and a half to two years, get a good color boost, and keep it going forever. But if they decide they don't want to, they don't have to. Um, so that's the nice part about it. Why should someone choose microblading versus other procedures? Um, Again, it's different with every person on what their skin type is, um, what's gonna be best for them. So someone like Jen with her complexion and type of skin, she can still get microblading. Is it going to be super beneficial? Not necessarily. Um, a lot of times with people with her complexion and skin type, um, the microblading just doesn't stay well. It'll either disappear or it will blur over time and just kind of look muddy and messy. Um, 
And at that point, it's like you're better off having the shading versus having the actual individual strokes. Um, depend and everybody wants something different. If you have a lot of brow hair and you just have maybe a spot you want to fill, yeah, microblading could be great for that. But also shading could be great for that. It really just depends on the person and the look you're going for and the type of skin that they have. John, are you still alive? I'm sleeping. <laughs> What procedure is most exciting for you to do? Um, I think, I still love lashes. I've been doing lashes for almost six years now and it's still one of my favorites. I guess it's hard for me to pick a 100% favorite because I kind of still just love doing everything. Um, I see a lot of people like before their weddings and before like really big events in their life, having babies, weddings, all sorts of things, vacations, all that kind of stuff. And so being able to see people and like help them get prepped for some really fun times in their life is really cool. The fact that I have people that are like, I don't want to see anybody else. Like I only want to see you. You're, the, you're my person that's going to get me ready for these days. Like that alone is a great feeling. And at that point, there's not like a favorite. It's really just like doing it and helping these clients out. Like it's all, it's all fun for me. How do lash extensions work? So lash extensions, there's a lot of um, different ways to do it. Lots of, a couple different types. Um, so there's what we call classic lashes. So with classic lashes, it's one, like thick, what you would consider like a eyelash, like a very thick, potentially long eyelash. And it's that one long eyelash basically getting attached to your one eyelash. Um, so we go through and we separate we use a special glue to glue that one lash onto that your natural lash. Um, and then there's also volume lashes, which is basically a group of super thin eyelashes that we basically fan out and then um, attach to that one lash. So you get two completely different looks from both. Your classic lash is going to be very natural and almost really look like that extension to your natural lash, whereas the um, volume lashes are going to, again, give a lot more volume, um, a lot more fullness to the natural lash. How do lash lifts work? So that's pretty similar to a curve for the lashes. So there's a silicone um, perm rod, and you go by size. Um, each curl is a different size based off the lash length. And then um, it kind of gets glued onto the eyelid, and then using that glue, you glue pull the natural lashes back onto the silicone rod. And then there's a couple different solutions that you'll use. Um, so you'll have the perm solution, a neutralizing solution, and then there's a little moisturizing serum at the end. Um, so then it, it kind of curls that curl right into, right, right into the natural lash. And they can last anywhere from six to eight weeks. Like, what, why would you want a lash lift? Like, that's for our friends with straight lashes, our friends with no, like, how, yes. why would you? So, like, coming from you, you have long, 
<laughs> curly lashes. So you really, I mean, you benefited from it. I loved my lash look. Yeah. But it's like, there's a lot more people out there. It's more common for people to have more of a, like, super straight lash. So a lot of times people, probably 90% of the time when people come in to get lips, every single time they're like, I feel like I have no eyelashes. I put mascara on all the time. I have no eyelashes. But then it's like when I look at them from my angle, I'm like, no, you have a lot. But the reason you feel like you don't have lashes is because they're pointing straight out, down. You're looking, when you're looking at them, you're looking right at the tips of the lashes versus the whole thing. So when you perm them up, you're getting to look at the whole shaft of the lash versus just looking at the tip. So it kind of, um, it just really gives you like a good look at the whole lash. So it's very like low maintenance and a good alternative. Yes. So because you're not having to come in like with lash extensions, it's every two weeks. So the lash lifts, it's every six to eight weeks. So it's just like a very, <coughs> very low maintenance type of thing. How is lip tint done? Um, so that's using these kind of similar tools um, with the machine. So there will be um, different size needles for shading and you will kind of shape them out. I use, when I shape the lips, it's pretty easy, just going around the natural lip line and then um, I use a concealer and a um, setting powder to set the concealer to give the good shape. And then we just numb it up and we use this machine with these needles to kind of go through and just shade everything in. Um, it takes about six to eight weeks to heal. And then you'll come back for a touch up because again, everybody's body heals differently. So you might have some spots that just don't um, 100%. So um, you'll come back six to eight weeks, have the touch up, it's the same thing. Sometimes during the touch up, we end up going over the whole lip. Sometimes we don't, it just really depends. Um, the color really is, I kind of just let my clients choose the color to their extent. I'm not gonna have someone come in here and I guess if they really, really want like a bright red lip and they're super fair like me, I guess, but I tend to like to start my clients off with a lighter color and work your way up to that darker color. But it's really just using this, and again, it's using a pigment, so it's meant to fade over time. Is it painful? I personally haven't had it done. My clients who have had it done, it's been very hit or miss. Um, I've had a lot of clients that say, no, it's tolerable, um, but I've had some clients say it's pretty painful. We do use numbing, so that helps, but there's only like so much numbing we can use, because a lot of times the numbing can toughen the skin up a little bit, and then it can also blanch the skin so it turns white. So then it becomes a little bit difficult to determine where the border of the lip is. How long does it last? It's about the same um, as like brows. So being with it being a tint, um, you're looking anywhere year and a half, two years, sometimes longer, depending on the products you use. If you're going to be like outside in the sun, um, pigment, things like that. Most people don't do touch-ups after you know, the year and a half, two years, most people just do their um, their first round, their first touch up and call it a day. But it really just depends on how bold you want it. And again, you don't want it anymore, you just go about your day and it'll eventually fade away. Does microblading work for oily skin people? Um, typically no, it doesn't work well. 
really, again, that's just because with how much oil is in the skin, it can, it breaks down that pigment, and so it kind of just gets rid of it. And um, it can either get rid of it or it can blur it out. And it's better to just have shading versus having microblading done and then having the lines blur out themselves because it just doesn't look as well. It's good having the microblading blur like that. Do people request to have their anal region done? And if so, do you do this procedure? As in like a wax? As in anything, I guess. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've waxed probably a hundred buttholes in my day. <laughs> um, that's, that's about the only thing we do with that here. It's just part of, that's just part of the Brazilian wax. I always give people the option. If they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. Uh, I've never had anybody say no. So it's part that you're paying for it. And quite honestly, it is the, literally the easiest part of the whole Brazilian is having that part done. And it's like the fastest part too. It takes like four seconds to wax that. What is worn during a bikini sugar wax hair removal? What is one wear? Yeah. Um, anything you want. You can go without underwear if you want. Because um, sometimes people want a bikini, but they want just inside that bikini line. Um, so you can just go without anything. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then you just wear, you can wear like your bikini bottoms that you plan on wearing swimming. You can wear just regular underwear, um, kind of whatever you're comfortable Are ingrown hairs a problem after a bikini wax? Sometimes, um, but with the sugaring that we do, um, we found that sugaring actually helps. So sugaring is a different form of wax, and it, um, it is made of just sugar, water, and lemon juice. It's all natural. And the technique is a little bit different than hot wax. It's all done room temperature. And the way that it is applied, it pulls the hair directly out of the hair follicle. So it helps kind of um, prevent like hairs breaking like you would if you got regular hot wax. And so because of that technique in general, um, it helps it helps kind of, I don't want to use the term damage, but it kind of helps that hair follicle be like, okay, you're pulling it out. I'm not going to grow any more hair here. And so a lot of times you find that you'll have like a huge reduction in hair when you get it sugared. Most people don't notice it when it's like brows or face, but with like bikinis and Brazilians, a lot of the hair grows back thinner and finer over time. And so because of that alone, uh, people have less ingrowns because it's not quite as invasive as what like waxing or shaping does. So it's, it's kind of nice. My daughter has thicker facial hair. What, would, what could we expect if we went to someone like you? I would definitely, if it is actually thicker, I would definitely recommend the sugaring versus waxing. It's going to be less painful that way, for sure. Um, and then again, with the way that the technique is, not only is it going to be less painful, but you're going to see that the hair is going to grow back in thinner, which is what you want, especially for facial hair. Um, So it's a pretty gentle, quick, <clears throat> most people can do it in about a half hour. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty gentle, pretty quick. It gets all the extra baby hairs too. And the nice part about sugaring is it, it doesn't attach to um, live skin cells. So if you've ever had anything waxed before your eyebrows, 
and you get that like glistening spot where it took some skin, you're not going to get that with sugar. Um, it's actually going to exfoliate the skin for you. What should they ask when calling or researching reviews for sugar? Um, well, everybody names everything different. So, um, we just have everything labeled under what it is when it comes to sugaring. But I know there's some other places, like around here, that they kind of come up with their own clever names for different areas and different types of sugaring. So, you'll just have to kind of do that research. Most people will say that they do sugaring, and then you just kind of have to figure it out, like, okay, this is what they're doing, um, and this is the area that we're doing it in. But for the most part, they all call it sugaring, so I would just ask for, um, for facial sugar. You can do, for us, we split it, so you can do a full face, which is exactly what it sounds like, chin, look the neck, um, going up into like the sideburn area, your forehead, all of the things. I tend to clean up the brows a little bit during a full face, but I don't shape. Um, doing a full brow sugar and doing all the extra shaping is different. And then we do a half, which is going to be your cheeks, your sideburns, your chin, and your neck. So everybody does it a little differently. So it's kind of just figuring out how they name it and how, you know, what, what they use and What is a hydrofacial? Um, so a hydrofacial is a really cool fancy machine, really cool expensive fancy machine that um, it has a handpiece on it where you have disposable tips and each tip does something different and exfoliates differently. The handle itself does multiple things. It sucks things out, it pushes serums in, and it exfoliates all at the same time. So um, what it does is it kind of sucks all of that congestion from underneath the surface of the skin and then pushes those serums into the skin. So at the end, there is a jar that collects everything so you can see um, all of the dead skin, the blackheads, all of the things. Um, it does have just a very small chemical peel product. Um, the percentage on the chemical peel is different based off of who you see. Medical spas have hydrofacial machines and they can offer a higher percentage on the chemical peels than we can. Um, but there is a chemical peel process. So it really helps kind of like brighten up the skin and um, get rid of all of that dead dry skin. Does it damage the skin barrier like a physical exfoliator? No, it doesn't damage the, the skin barrier by any means. I mean, it still does a really good exfoliation, but it's not like, it's just a plastic tip. So it's not, it's not like little microbeads that don't dissolve. It's not anything like that. Like it's literally just like a plastic tip. <coughs> that was my last question. John, are you still alive? Yeah. Is it, is it hurting? No, it doesn't hurt, but I need not a cigarette. <laughs> I'm like, can you water? Yeah. Where's my water? Oh, you have water. Tori, do you have anything you'd like to add? really doing your research every state, every country, 
everywhere does everything differently. Like nobody does it the same. Even when it comes to eyelashes, like yes, I'm certified and I was taught to do it a certain way, but as for styles, everybody still does everything differently. How you fan, how you do everything. When it comes to brows and shaping and all those things, like everybody has their own way to do things. And how to do things in their own way that makes them comfortable. Um, having this type of job where you're sitting and leaning over every day or bending over a bed, like we all got to find ways to do it and everybody does it differently. So just because you see me doing this this way doesn't mean that everybody's going to do it this way. Um, we all kind of find our own way that makes us comfortable in our job. What kind of aftercare does this require? Um, it's pretty easy. It's very much like a tattoo. Um, so wash it within an hour or two after she leaves here, and then I will send her home with um, some hustle butter to put over it for the next few days. Just want to wash it a couple times a day, make sure that hustle butter gets put on it, stay hydrated with water, um, and just keep it nice and hydrated. Um, typically, day three, four, sometimes five, you're gonna, you're gonna peel. It's very normal, it's gonna get itchy, and it's gonna peel, and then it's gonna look like there's absolutely nothing there. Uh, it, it, it ghosts out. Um, I'm currently in the ghost phase of my brows, so I have pencil on them, but Typically, week four, five, that color starts to pop back in. So you're really doing the heavy aftercare for the first about seven to 10 days. And then after that, it's kind of letting them do their own thing until you touch up a point in it. <clears throat> Everything that you do, you have done to yourself? Um, for the most part, yeah. I think the only thing that I haven't done is lip washing. So that's that's really it. And it's not because I don't want it, it's because I just don't think I need it. I love the color of my natural lips, so I don't feel like I want to change anything. Um, but as for everything else, all the waxing, all the hydrofacials, I have lashes on right now. So I'm at all. <clears throat> Does lip filler affect the lip washing at all? Is that a thing that you should be, that you should know before you do that to someone? So, yes and no. I've noticed, um, I've done two clients so far that have had lip washing, or that have had the lip filler, and I've noticed that they swell a little bit more during the lip washing than what a normal client would. But as for like feeling and texture and things like that, no, it's pretty much the same. Um, the only thing is, is I personally just, again, everybody's going to say something different. This is my personal preference. If you want to get lip filler, you do it first and you wait you know, four to six weeks before getting lip blushing because you want it to settle. If you want to do your lip blushing first and then you do lip filler, I want you to wait through the whole entire process. So that means coming in, getting your lip blushing, waiting your six to eight weeks for your touch up, getting your touch up, and then waiting another six to eight weeks. I want it to be 100% lip blush to heal before getting any lip filler. There's a lot of people out there that I've seen in groups that I'm in that I've said, oh, after the touch up or at, even after the first round, after the first <coughs> round, go ahead and go do lip filler. I don't want that. I don't want that liability. So personally, I want you to wait until we're completely set and done, and then you can go do it. Um, if you don't want to wait that long, then you do your, you do it before. How long would someone expect to be in the salon for these procedures? Um, again, different for everybody. Um, 
first timers, it's normally a, a longer appointment. It's typically, brows can take a little bit longer because of the mapping. So with brows, it could be four hours-ish um, for the first time. Lips are typically three to three and a half hours. And then when you come in for your touch up, it's typically a lot less time just because your shape's already there. So there's, when it comes to the brows and everything else, like I don't have to really reshape the brows that much or like I don't really have to map out the lips too much. And then I might not even have to touch up the whole lip. So. Definitely a quick appointment, second time around. You mentioned you use concealer and setting powder when you do the lips. What products do you use? Um, so I went cheap and I got e.l.f. <laughs> I got Don't e.l.f. slam e.l.f. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not slamming e.l.f. <laughs> but like, I just, you know, when it's just being used as like a way to map things, I'm like, I'm going the cheap route. And I just did e.l.f. concealer, e.l.f. setting powder, and honestly, like when I do the lips, I feel like I feel terrible at the end when I'm trying to get the rest of it off because I feel like always the upper lip it sticks so bad, and I like it does not come off, <laughs> not at all. Like it's even like I've used Sharpie to mark around the lips, <laughs> and the Sharpie comes off. <laughs> So, I mean, that out concealer and, and setting powder really works. Okay, now it's done. Okay. So, when you're microblading and you're matching pigment to, like, the matching the hair to the eyebrows and you're doing a redhead, sometimes, like, I've seen where like the ink in like tattooed eyebrows gets like purplish. Does that happen when you do this procedure? It can, for sure. Um, again, it depends on the pigment line itself and how they make it, the undertones, all that kind of thing, um, and what they mix into, like their, when the artist mixes the pigment color. So, you don't really want to ever mix pigment lines, but each color is customized to the client. So things with microblading and shading and all that kind of stuff, like all of that has really accelerated and has, there's so many new things out there now. And for a long time there wasn't, it was just like, Tattoos kind of became the big thing, and pigments kind of were on the back burner. And so, a lot of times when you see people's brows, sometimes they turn red, sometimes they turn gray, sometimes they turn blue. A lot of times that's from, I mean, all the time, it's from the actual pigment, because pretty much all pigment cools, but if you use too much red, or you use too much um, of like a cool tone, it's, it's obviously going to turn more of that cool color. Um, so you really gotta learn your pigment line to know like how they're gonna turn. So like for you, you have more of a natural, or a natural neutral undertone. So yeah, I can use a neutral brow color on you, but because everything turns cool, you kinda wanna kind of want to go the opposite direction a little bit. So you add just the tiniest bit of extra warm to it to kind of help counteract so that you don't get that red pigment or you don't get that blue pigment. So again, everybody's skin is different. Pigments are different. Um, way back in the day, people used to get their eyebrows tattooed on with actual tattoo pigment. Yeah, we've seen that. And that's when you're gonna see that really gray, blue color. <laughs> that's not, not good. 
So we do not want to go to our local tattoo artist for eyebrows, for looks for makeup. Yes, unless that's something that they also specialize in and they're using pigments, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Because a tattoo artist, if they're using an ink, that is permanent. The only way you're getting rid of it is laser hair removal. And because with our faces and using chemicals and all that stuff, like the chances of even that ink turning blue and gray and being on your face is pretty high. So unless that tattoo artist is specializing in brows and you know whatever and doing you know, and using like actual pigments instead of tattooing, then I say yeah, go for it, but I don't necessarily recommend it. I don't think there's a lot of tattoo artists that actually offer brows, but I mean, my guy does a great job, but I definitely would not let him do my eyebrows, <laughs> that's for sure. Do they? Yeah. I'm not done yet, but I'm just going to Guys, I have eyebrows. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. <laughs> so now that we are done with everything, tell us what you guys think of this experience. Did you guys enjoy coming with us? Did my eyebrows microbladed? Did we answer your questions? Do you want to see more content like this? Do you want us to video other things that we're getting done at the salon? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Ring the ding-a-ling. Ding the ring-a-ling. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.